Welcome to All About Money on HK IBC. I'm Chloe Fong. Picturesque Switzerland is a popular destination for Chinese tourists who are fascinated by the country's food, history, and high end shopping. Tourism is a pillar of the Swiss economy, but it suffered heavily during COVID. However, Switzerland's tourism industry is back on the road to recovery, aided by Asia's reopening and impressive promotions. My guest today is the mastermind of the Swiss National Tourism Board, Martin Neidiger, the chief executive of Switzerland Tourism, is here to discuss the industry's revival. So hi, Martin. It's great to have you today. Wonderful. Thank you for having me. And first, I mean, we definitely need to talk about the latest campaigns from the board. I know um, the board have already had a slate of various campaigns in the past, and the latest one featured the tennis legend Roger Federer and comedian Trevor Noah. So tell us, how did you come up? How did you come up with it, this idea of you know connecting these two figures together and to have them on a train of lifetime? Well, it's actually the, the third one of a series. We started already three years ago. The first year was together with Robert De Niro, the second one with Anne Hathaway. And now it cumulated uh, basically with this duo, Roger Feather and Trevor Noah. Mm. And uh, it, uh, the base of it is the, the, the willingness of Roger Feather, who is mm. undiscussably uh, a legend, a Swiss legend, uh, his willingness to work together with the Swiss tourism industry. And I think this is where it's based on. And the fact that we could do already three in a row is just overwhelming. Hmm. And this time you have the half Swiss Trevor Noah on this. You, your campaigns actually put a lot of focus on the train system, on the public transport system in Switzerland. How important are they in boosting the, you know, the tourism sector's growth? Well, it, it's, it's, it's important, but it's not so relevant. You know that the Swiss public uh, system is arguably one of the best in, mm. in the world. They are always uh, extremely precise. Uh, the Swiss public services, they reach each and every village and each and every remote valley in Switzerland. It is very important. We are all train lovers in Switzerland. So it, it's basically part of our DNA. And now we're happy to share this with our visitors. And plus, it helps us now also with a more sustainable travel, because once you're in Switzerland, it totally makes sense to hop on the trains and mm. use the public transportation system. So it was kind of obvious that now in the third edition of uh, the clip with Roger Federer that we, we, we put the scene or we make it the scene of, uh, of this uh, tr uh, public transportation system, uh, namely the trains. Mm, very precise, never late. <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, I know that there was a seemingly like a poem for the promotion uh, uh, campaigns as well, it's really beautifully written. Like, if you're, ne you're, if you're even late or feel stressed, take a ride and you'll be impressed. The Grand Train Tour of Switzerland is what you need. Stunning views and a laugh guaranteed. Did you really use ChatGPT to produce this? Absolutely, but this is not the campaign. This is my very personal LinkedIn post, which you have just cited. And uh, because we're playing around now, with, now we have the clip, which is fabulous. I really recommend everyone to have a look at it. And now we're playing around with it. We have bloopers. So, so many things went, went wrong at the shoot. We have a train interview, an interview on the train. Roger is asking Trevor some nasty questions. And now we're playing around with GIFs and also with little poems because AI is, uh, is so present everywhere. So I personally just thought I make a little poem and I use ChatGPT and I have also declared it, prompted by ChatGPT. So it's, it's fun to, to, to play around right. with this. Boosted by AI technology as well. Exactly. And how does Switzerland also differ from other European destinations? Well, we are in the center of Europe. We, are the, we own the Alps, you could say. We are in the center also of the Alps. And um, uh, of course, all or most of European countries have uh, fabulous nature. But um, I would really say, and I might be a little bit biased, that uh, it is absolutely uh, fabulous, the nature in Switzerland. The mountains, the combination between mountains and nature and landscape, uh, the, the contrasts between the beautiful mountain lakes and the high mountains is just spectacular. And I think this is really one of the main reasons why people choose Switzerland as a destination, because of its just unspoiled, stunning nature. Mm. Also to help people distress and to experience a totally different lifestyle when there's any chances. And also speaking of uh, the industry, Switzerland, uh, you know, this tourism industry account for about 
nearly 3% of national GDP, and also it accounts for about 4.4% of jobs in Switzerland. So it's a very important segment. And this industry was also hammered by the pro uh, pandemic, uh, with the industry losing over 935 billion US dollars in revenue. And when, I mean, the industry has been recovering since last year. Uh, but now, when do you think the industry will be fully recovered to its peak, peak level, mm. its heyday levels? The, uh, actually, the importance, the, the, the fiscal importance of tourism in Switzerland is significantly higher than the numbers you just mentioned. These are the direct effects. Mm. But uh, tourism is not an isolated industry. Mm. You have so many uh, businesses actually surrounded the tourism industry because we... Uh, so, so many tourism destinations are remotely in Switzerland and basically the whole valley or the whole region depends on tourism. Maybe not directly mm. uh, with a hotel or with mobility or a restaurant, but indirectly. So it is quite important that uh, I think this is probably true for other countries too, but right. in Switzerland particularly. And uh, so every, all the others have suffered also from COVID, not only hotels, restaurants and mountain railways, all the, the entire industry. Mm. Now, what happened is in 2022, we have reached nearly pre-pandemic levels, but uh, with a distinct differentiation of um, Swiss travelers, mm. Swiss traveling in their own country mm. and foreign travels. So uh, everyone was more or less forced to stay at home and to discover their own country. But now this is going to level out again. So there will be less Swiss traveling in their own countries and uh, foreign tourists will come back. So. Uh, uh, this is the effect that's happening at this moment. Mm, then would, uh, f for example, this year with the China reopening, could, could we see an even better recovery uh, for 2023 then? Absolutely. Um, you see that um, 2021 was basically the, st the, the stability of the domestic Swiss market. Mm. 2022, last year, was the return of the European market and 2023 for us is the return of Asia, and that's quite important to us. Asia market is for us a very, very relevant mm. uh, 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 factor in, in the tourism industry. How important, you say that the Asian market is very important, how much like of, of a, for example, proportion it accounts for the overall um, inbound uh, visits? Well, in numbers, domestic, in a normal year, domestic tourism makes roughly 45% mm. of all our overnights. Then we have closed markets, European markets, 35%, and the all long-haul markets, 20%. So it's quite important to us. But that's not only the figures. Mm. They also travel differently. Mm. They book longer ahead. They stay longer because they really like to immerse into Switzerland. They uh, do uh, off-season also. They not all, all come and travel in the high seasons. So it's not, it's, the figure is one thing. And also on the other side, you have the distribution on a different style. You need to somehow diversify mm. your country. That's very important that you not only uh, depend on one market too much. So in this context, Asia is extremely important to us. Mm. Also about to cater to different kind of demands as well. And uh, Absolutely. In and uh, again, the uh, Asians in particular are also interested in our beautiful watches. They buy not only the tourism products, but also watches and shopping and other business. Luxury products. Exactly. Right. Uh, we know that in 2019, arrivals from mainland China reached a peak, accounting for some 1.8 million overnight stays. And uh, you also said this year it will also be boosted by the China's tourist numbers. Are Chinese tourists the biggest spenders compared with other, uh, for example, tourists from other foreign countries? They definitely belong to the top three, there's no doubt about it. There's maybe uh, the Middle East. They also spend a lot, but they're absolutely uh, in the top spenders, which is mm. uh, uh, not so surprisingly, because when they choose to travel to Europe and when they in particular travel to choose to Switzerland, they really want to make the best out of their vacation. And uh, so they, uh, they, uh, they're willing to, uh, to, um, to spend the money, and that's quite interesting to us. Is there any data about the per capita spending from Chinese tourists compared with other uh, tourists from other regions. Right. So it is roughly 380 francs a day, what Chinese spend in, uh, in Switzerland. And that in comparison to the Middle East, they're roughly about 430 or $450 mm. uh, a day. So there's a, a, a slight difference. Mm. After China, which is a third like country on the list? It's America. It's the US. Yeah. All right. Hong Kong maybe could also see some small portion of the overall market as well. 
if there are any data about how many Hong Kongers travel to Switzerland before the COVID time? Yeah, we had, uh, before the pre-pandemic, we had roughly 200,000 uh, uh, overnights from uh, Hong Kong to Switzerland. Mm. So uh, that is a, uh, this is a, a very interesting number. It's, of course, it helps that we don't need a visa uh, from Hong Kong to Switzerland. It helps that we have a direct connection to Switzerland between mm. Hong Kong and Zurich. That uh, this is really, really helpful. Right. And also now with potentially more uh, visitors coming to your country for traveling, what have been done to also prepare for the influx of the tourist numbers? Well, you know, when... Is now it we, ready for cater to more visitors? We are absolutely ready because um, luckily enough, Switzerland was never really down, down. Never was a single hotel closed. Our government allowed hotels to be open throughout the pandemics. Our ski resorts were open, uh, and actually two years ago in that winter, the Switzerland was the only European country that allowed operations uh, in the ski resorts. So our government uh, was very tourism friendly, you would say so. So we didn't clash completely down to zero, so we, all, we always had a certain level. Mm -hmm. This allowed us to keep staff employed, this allowed us to keep operations going, and then the ramp up was considerably uh, faster than maybe with others. All right. Thank you very much for sharing, Martin. Let's take a short break for now. But coming up next, we have more discussions over the Switzerland tourism industry's recovery outlook and, and what, what are the keys to make successful campaigns. So don't go away. Welcome back to All About Money on HK IBC. I'm Chloe Fung. Joining us today is Martin Neidiger, the Chief Executive of Switzerland Tourism, which is the country's national tourism board. And we're talking about its latest tourism campaigns, as well as the Asian markets. So thank you for joining us, Martin. Are there any changes in terms of the marketing approach in the Asian region before and after the pandemic? Well, we're just about to start up, uh, so we cannot really tell has it been changes, but we can tell from the tour operators that the demand has slightly changed. One significant change is that people really want to stay longer in Switzerland. They're a little bit done with uh, hopping in the European capitals in a couple of days. Mm. So it seems that the pandemic really made people rethink we want to immerse in one country. People stay longer to really appreciate the whole country. They choose smaller groups or FIT. FIT is the terminology for as individual travelers. Mm. And also they're interested in exploring new seasons. For example, autumn seems to be very interested, uh, which is a fabulous season. Or even winter. You don't, you can ski, of course. You can enjoy winter on a slope. But if you're not a skier, there's so many things to do in Switzerland, even if you're not a skier. Because the landscape completely changes. And if everything is snow covered, it's just magical. Mm. Now, if uh, the stayings are longer, how long, usually, what is the uh, average staying length then? Uh, usually before, it was statistically uh, around two, two nights, mm. but then you have the really short uh, stayers and a bit longer, so it's a, it's a, a medium. Uh, so, but we think this is going to increase significantly. You should really plan a week to enjoy Switzerland at its best. All right, got it. And also, uh, are there any dis dis, um, significant differences between the Chinese tourists and other Asian uh, tourists in terms of their, for example, consuming and uh, traveling patterns now? Well, what we realize is that maybe more than some years ago, Chinese are really interested also in the local food, that they really want to explore the country also through their palate. They're interested in what Switzerland has to offer uh, culinary-wise. Mm. And uh, also not only the hotspot, of course you need to go and see the Matterhorn. This is our, our famous, most famous uh, mountain, the most photographed mountain in the world, by the way. So of course this belongs on any bucket list, but that's not it. You have not really seen Switzerland, but just take, uh, uh, taking your picture of the Matterhorn. There's so much more to see. And uh, this is really interesting that people want, or uh, Asian tourists want to uh, of course, see the hotspots, but then immediately go and see also maybe unexplored destinations. That's quite interesting. Off the beat, like off destinations? The, off the beaten path. So will you, uh, for example, will your board also cater to uh, for design some new routes for the 
for the travels as well? We do that exactly because we want to uh, we, we want to give the travelers tools to discover the country. One tool you could call so is our grand tour of Switzerland. Mm. It is something like the Route 66. It is a road trip tour, 1,600 kilometers long, mm. and this is actually a perfect combination of hotspots of, of, of places in Switzerland you need to see, like Lucerne you need to see, Jungfrau you need to see, but then again, small places where you probably have difficulties to pronounce the, the name, sometimes even us, right. and uh, a, a little bit uh, unexpected Switzerland. So this exists actually uh, as a road trip, it's called the Grand Tour of Switzerland, and almost the same concept we have on trains, and that's called the Grand Train, train Tour of tour. Switzerland. And that brings us back to the campaign with Roger Feder with Roger, we are, we are promoting now this grand train tour of Switzerland. I know that you seem to be still positive about the outlook for the China market, but on the other hand, I know that hotelery Swiss president, he was uh, also signaling some concerns about China market uh, outlook, uh, citing the geopolitical concerns. Would this be something that will also worry you at some level? Um, in I'm terms not, of the East longer uh, long-term outlook, I'm not so worried because we have basically practiced this, practiced this return to or this recovery with all the other countries, with uh, Switzerland, with Europe, and also with Americas. And I don't see the reason why Asian market or Chinese in particular should react any differently. After the pandemic, everyone wants to travel mm. because people were locked in or locked down for so much. So the the thing you're really dying for is to go out and travel and rediscover the world, have intercultural exchange with other people, explore again the world, become basically a better human being because when you're in touch with other cultures, you become a more empathic, more respectful person. And I don't see why this should be any difference in, 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 in China or in Asia than in other countries. So I'm, I'm quite positive that people are very, very resilient to many things, to many obstacles, because mm. traveling is something very, very important in human beings. Mm. So in terms of geopolitical development, this would not worry you? I hope so. It, uh, mm. it won't uh, stress the market too much. Yeah. Mm. Got it. And also speaking of the, uh, your expertise, you have years of experience in the strategic marketing management, and you also did great work in promoting Switzerland's tourism. I'm not sure if you noticed this or not, but Hong Kong has also launched its own tourism campaigns. I'm thinking, uh, from your perspective, what would make a campaign to be successful? Uh, I'm unfortunately. What are not, the keys to it? I, I'm not aware because I haven't seen the, the one from Hong Kong yet, so I cannot uh, elaborate on that. But what I realized when I just landed here that one of the first touch points I saw was there was already a Hong Kong welcomes you with a counter with someone who would have been at my service, and I think this is very important. We have something similar actually in Zurich. At the airport, uh, we already we have uh, a large branding to really welcome the visitors because you never get to a, show the hospitality. To show the hospitality right away. So when they basically embark the plane and they, the, the first touch point is the airport, they already need to be welcomed. So this is something we have in common, and I think this is very important. What's the point in creating big marketing campaign that once the visitors come to you, they're left alone. So I think this is something uh, very positive. And nowadays, uh, every country on this planet is a tourism destination. So there's a competition going on. So you need, exactly. to, be, you need to be creative and authentic at the same time. Mm. And this is very key to, to, to balance those important factors. Authentic as well. Uh, how, how much of experience do you have in Hong Kong? And if you could also share with us some suggestions on how we could make Hong Kong more attractive to the international communities, what, what kind of like suggestions that you would suggest uh, to also look into? I, I probably haven't been long enough here yet to, to really dive into it. I can just say your skyline is stunning. This is something I've experienced and even uh, jogged along the shore uh, uh, to, to get a little bit of a nature feeling. So that's probably not enough expertise to, to, uh, to, to give uh, big advice. Uh, it seems to me that Hong Kong is already on the bucket list of, uh, of so many travelers. It, it seems to be one of the absolutely must-dos if you want to visit a, a, a hot and up-and-coming city. Hong Kong is definitely on the list. So they must have been doing something really, really correct and right. All right. That's a very good feedback as well. Very positive feedback as well. And. Uh, you had, like we briefly mentioned previously, you had uh, 
the different kind of campaigns with Roger Federer and also with Anne Hathaway. Would you consider launching some new campaigns in the future, for example, to feature, have some Asian features to enhance your campaign's impact in the Asian market as well? Absolutely. I think uh, this is definitely something we're looking into it. Uh, this is why I'm here. This is why we have uh, an office here. This is why we have in China four offices in Greater China altogether. We have several offices in Asia. Asia is, I mentioned before, a very important market to us. Uh, we want to host more Asian visitors in Switzerland. We want to welcome them. And uh, I think it's, it might be just time to uh, put uh, someone from these regions uh, aside of uh, Roger Feathers. If you have any names, I'm open to it. For example, would you consider uh, Michelle Yu, who is the Oscar winner this year, to be your potential collaboration partner in the future? She would be fabulous. If you have her phone number, please call me. <laughs> All right, so we're looking forward to that development later on. And speaking of uh, another aspect that I really want to bring in before we wrap up this episode is about the sustainable travel as well. And your board also has uh, this kind of initiative called Swiss Tenable. So could you also tell us a bit about this initiative? Why did you decide to launch this, uh, this program and how does this program work? I think one of the outcome of, the, of, of COVID is definitely, or of the pandemic, is that people are more aware of how do I invest my time, how do I invest my money, and what does my behavior do to the planet? Mm. So this is something that has become quite noticeable. Sustainability at its own is not a travel motive. No one on this planet is picking a destination because that destination is particularly sustainable. But it becomes a reason not to go if the country is doing bad things to the planet. So you need, really need to find the right answers. And the answer of Switzerland is basically that once you land in Switzerland, you have reached the most sustainable travel destination in the world. And we make sure that everyone, that all the, the service providers, the hotels, the restaurants, the mountain railways, behave very, as sustainable as possible. And uh, for this, we have created this uh, initiative, which is called Swissstainable, mm. the combination of Switzerland and sustainable, something no one can copy. And uh, we already have, within one year, we have already 1,800 uh, service providers who are participating. Our goal is four or 5,000 mm. to really ensure to the travel industry, to ensure to the visitors, once you reach the country, you can be sure we pay all our staff fairly. We do whatever we can to reduce our emissions and you are doing something good if you're visiting this country. This is not a negative impact on the environment. This is actually something good. Uh, what, what do they do um, practically to, to make sure that their surveys are sustainable? Uh, are sustainable? It's, uh, it's uh, one part of the whole initiative is also a program. Mm. So our participants, uh, the hotels, for example, they have the possibility to join us in one of three levels. We have sustainable one, two, three. One is the entry level, three is the, the, the golden standard, you could say so. And depending on the standard, they have very, very high mm. uh, criteria. For example, the, the golden standard, they really need to do, they need to dedicate one person who does nothing but making sure the organization really, really uh, sustainable. This is food waste, this is transportation, this is limits of energy. It might not be so exciting to hear for the visitors, but we can make sure that the, uh, the impact on environment mm. will be absolutely minimized in such a, a hotel or in a, in a mountain railway. Mm. Do you see the sustainable travel will also be a trend globally later on with more countries uh, you know, joining this kind of such initiative as well? Absolutely. I don't know any countries which has no sustainable plan. They all have concepts, they all have strategies. All of them are as far as, as we are in terms of executing the plans. We are a little bit of, we have a little bit of a uh, first mover advantage. This has got to do with the fact that Switzerland, it, it, the Swiss people, the population of Switzerland, they behave per their own DNA already quite sustainable. We are recycling for centuries. We're taking care of our environment and of our nature for a long time because it's our asset. I mentioned before the reason number one why visitors are choosing Switzerland is nature. Mm. So it's our responsibility to do whatever we can to protect it. Absolutely. Thank you so much, sir, for your sharing. That's Martin Neidiger, the chief executive of Switzerland Tourism. And we'll be back next Sunday night. Until the next time, please take care.